Dylan Roof has lost his appeal on the, his death sentence for the 2015 slayings of nine black members of a historic South Carolina church. The three-judge federal appeals court from the Fourth Cir U.S. Circuit Court in Richmond upheld Roof's conviction and his sentence for the racially motivated shootings at Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston. Roof's attorneys appealed the sentence on the grounds that jurors should have been able to hear evidence about his mental health and he should have been given a complete competency hearing. In their ruling on Wednesday, the appeals court disagreed, saying the trial judge did not err when he had determined Roof was competent to stand trial, pointing out that Roof opened fire against African Americans at their church during their Bible study. The judges, in a strong rebuke, said his actions were meant to terrorize not only the victims, but also members of the black community. The U.S. military is on the move to mandate the COVID-19 vaccine for all service members. During Wednesday's Pentagon briefing, spokesman James Kirby said Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin had determined that vaccinations are necessary for the safety of service members. Service members must receive their shots immediately, and according to the Pentagon, more than 800,000 service members have not yet gotten their shots. Among active force members, 69% are fully vaccinated, just over 76% have at least one dose. Well, the countdown continues in Afghanistan this morning with just five days left to get Americans, Afghan supporters and nationals desperate to escape out of the region. With time running out, administration officials acknowledge they are still trying to make initial contact with most of the U.S. citizens still on the ground. Jay Gray joins us from Washington with the latest. This is the evacuation by the numbers. Five days left. And according to the State Department, roughly 1,500 Americans still in Afghanistan. 500 have received instructions on how to get to the airfield, but officials are still trying to make contact with around 1,000 U.S. citizens still on the ground. We're aggressively reaching out to them multiple times a day through multiple channels of communication. As huge crowds continue to gather, it's impossible to put a number on the Afghans desperate to leave. Overnight, the State Department issuing a security alert, calling the situation at the Kabul airport dynamic and volatile. It is not an airport. It is a frontline war. I've been in the war a lot. I've seen a lot of fires. I've seen a lot of gunfires and stuff like this with the Americans. i never seen something like that. Never. Rafi Azim is a former U.S. military interpreter. He lives in Texas now, but went back to Afghanistan earlier this month to help move his family to Kabul, where he thought they'd be safe. But as the Taliban took control... My youngest brother called me. He's like, run. What do you mean, run? He's like, run, Kabul collapse. Azim knew they had to get out. After three days, they finally made it onto a U.S. military transport, leaving behind friends, family, and a country in turmoil. Jay Gray, NBC News, Washington.